This is the first of several examples where we will be applying Faraday's Law. In a previous video, I performed some simple experiments from which we obtain Faraday's Law. Although it is very simple to obtain Faraday's Law, application of Faraday's Law can be conceptually difficult. Previously, we saw that electric field intensity originates on positive charges and terminates on negative charges. Looking at Faraday's law, we see that a changing magnetic flux is going to produce an electric field. This first example is going to look at the nature of that electric field produced by a changing magnetic flux. We know a current produces a magnetic flux density field, and if we have a solenoid with the current flowing through it, we have a very strong magnetic flux density field inside the solenoid and a very weak field outside. If we vary the current flowing through the solenoid, we will vary the magnetic flux density field being produced, and that changing magnetic flux density field will produce an electric field intensity. Let's determine the electric field intensity generated from an infinitely long, tightly bound solenoid that has 10 to the 6 turns per meter, has a cross-sectional area of 1 square meter, and we're ramping the current in the solenoid at a rate of 15 over pi amps per second. Because the solenoid is infinitely long, the magnetic flux density field inside the solenoid will never come out, so it can't loop around and come back in the other way. So the magnetic flux density field outside the solenoid will be zero. So let's first apply Ampere's circuit law, which tells us the integral of h dot dl around a closed path is equal to the current enclosed by that path. This dashed line will represent an Amperian loop and will make the length of it one meter. So that means there are 10 to the 6 turns inside the Amperian loop. When we integrate from A to B, we'll get the magnetic field intensity inside the solenoid times the length from A to B, which is 1 meter. When we integrate from B to the solenoid, or from the solenoid to A, our DL is perpendicular to the magnetic field intensity, so H dot DL will be zero and we'll get no contribution. And of course, when we're outside the solenoid, the magnetic field intensity is zero, so again, we will get no contribution. So the integral of H dot DL around our Amperian loop will be the H inside the solenoid times one meter. We are integrating counterclockwise here, so the current enclosed will be the current coming out of the page through the surface area defined by our Amperian loop, so that will just be the number of turns inside our Amperian loop, which will be 10 to the 6, because we picked a length of 1 meter here, times the current flowing in the solenoid, I. So H inside the solenoid is 10 to the 6 times the current flowing through the solenoid divided by 1 meter. The magnetic flux density field inside the solenoid is the permeability of free space times our magnetic field intensity. Mu sub 0 is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7th henrys per meter. So the magnetic flux density field inside the solenoid is 0 0.4 pi times the current flowing henrys per meter squared. So the total magnetic flux through a cross section of the solenoid is the magnetic flux density field inside the solenoid times its cross sectional area of one square meter to give us 0 0.4 pi i henrys. So now let's apply Faraday's law. So the view here is of a cross-section through the solenoid 
and looking down from the positive z-axis. For our path of integration, I'm going to select a circle that is centered on the z-axis and we're going to integrate in the clockwise direction. And the radius rho of our path of integration is greater than the radius of the solenoid. So the integral of e dot dl clockwise around the loop is going to equal minus and in this case will be 1 around our path of integration. And if you put the fingers of your right hand in the direction of your integration, your thumb points into the page, so it will be the d phi dt into the page, and d phi dt into the page is equal to minus d phi dt out of the page. Out of the page is in the z direction. So now we can substitute this term here for phi and when we take the derivative we'll have a di dt in here so we'll substitute our 15 over pi amps per second and for Henry's I substituted Weber's over amps so these two amps will cancel and a Weber is a volt second so these seconds will cancel so we will end up with 6 volts. Because of the cylindrical symmetry of the solenoid, we will work in cylindrical coordinates. So here is a general representation of an electric field intensity in cylindrical coordinates. Because of the symmetry, there can be no variation in the electric field intensity with movement in the phi or z direction. Since the magnetic flux is only changing in the z direction, there is only going to be a component of the electric field intensity in the phi direction. So we know the electric field intensity has this form. This is the expression for integrating around in the a sub phi direction, which would be counterclockwise. But we are actually going to integrate in the clockwise direction, so we will need to add a minus sign here. So this integral is minus 2 pi rho times the electric field intensity, and it is equal to the electromotive force being produced by the solenoid. So the electric field intensity is 6 over 2 pi rho in the minus a sub phi direction, and the units are volts per meter because when you put rho in in terms of meters, you'll have volts per meter. So the electric field intensity are circles around the solenoid, here's our solenoid, that are in the clockwise direction. This is the electric field intensity for outside the solenoid for rho greater than A, where A is the radius of the solenoid. And since the cross-sectional area of the solenoid is 1 square meter, the radius of the solenoid is 1 over the square root of pi meters. Unlike the electric field intensity that comes from charges where they have a source positive charge and a sink negative charge, electric field intensity lines coming from changing magnetic flux formed closed paths. You can also apply Faraday's law to find the electric field intensity inside the solenoid. When applying Faraday's law for when rho is greater than the radius of the solenoid, the amount of enclosed flux was always the same. When rho is less than the radius of the solenoid, the amount of enclosed flux is going to vary with rho. Applying Faraday's law for when rho is less than the radius of the solenoid, you would find that the electric field intensity is 3 rho in the minus A sub phi direction volts per meter. In example 2, we are going to surround the solenoid with the conducting ring and see what happens.